Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Roblox Game Development. Today we're going to fix our zombie in a lot of ways, mostly resizing him and getting him to not fall apart every time he starts. So the first thing is we're going to ungroup our zombie. That can be done by clicking the model and then clicking or then pressing Control U. All right, now let's go through every single piece of this guy. Just hold Control and click all the different pieces of him. Go to properties, all the way down to size. All right, or part, whatever. Change the form factor to symmetric. Yes, it looks like it messed just about everything up, but that's kind of the plan. All right. So now his legs, which by the way we have them named wrong, uh, this should be right, this should be left leg, this should be right leg. So we're gonna fix that right now. And by the way, the L should be capitalized um, in leg. So right leg, and this should be left leg. Oh, there I go failing again. All right, boom. And let me fix this so that that's not making noise. There we go. All right. So the legs are renamed. Now let's get both of these legs to actually touch the floor, shall we? Uh, use this. Nope. nope. There we go. All right. Now the torso should already be the right. Yep. It's the right size. Two, two, one. Let's bring that down to the legs. The arms are actually all messed up. They should be. 2, 1, 1, like that, and we should rename them, but we'll take care of that in a second. Alright, so look at this. If we go down and we find its top surface and we change it to, say, inlet, there we go. We want the top surface to be on the top. Shocking, isn't it? So there we go. Now let's move his arm right next to his legs to fit correctly. Ugh. I hate when Roblox's drag and drop doesn't work right. Alright, move it up. And then we'll do the same thing to this arm. And then we'll rename the arms in a second. Uh, but this needs to be 2, 1, 1. No, not 1, 2, 1. 2, 1, 1. Like that. It's top surface. We will also change to inlet. There we go. Whoa, didn't want to move his head. Okay, rotate it. Move it over here. And bring it up. Okay, now we can go up here and we can change both of those top surfaces back. And last but not least, let's just lower this guy's head. Alright, so we're going to lower his head down to here. But see how it's not touching his, head, or his torso yet? We're going to take off Can Clyde and actually move his head into his torso a little bit. Um, just because that looks cooler. Okay? So there we go. Our zombie is resized. But that's not everything we need to do. We also need to go to the torso and change all of this to um, weld. All of these different services except the front and back to weld. Okay? So, weld weld and weld there we go so now you can see the difference but I believe this should fix it uh, the whole falling apart issue that is so let's go ahead and press F6 and see how it goes he hasn't fallen apart yet will he still have full health that's the real question here Will no. And oh, that's why. One second. All right. So now we need to group him together again, make him into one model, and let's take this zombie that's here. And which script is it? All right. Get this script. Wait, no. Okay. This script that has this kind of stuff in. It and window. No. Nope. Tools settings. Alright, that has this script in it. You want this script and the zombie to be moved into our model. And then we'll rename our model 
zombie. And now when we press F6, we should have this falling apart issue fixed. There we go. He's not falling apart. And if we walk over to him, his health is still zero. That's annoying. Why, why is your health at zero, dude? What the heck? Okay, so your head just fell off. That's weird. Um, you should probably have that checked out. UMG, guys, it worked. Okay, so all I had to do was I moved the head back on top of the torso. I didn't put it in the torso, just on top of the torso. And it worked. Uh, so just do that. And let's see it work now. Go, 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 go. Okay, so we walk over to our zombie. And his health should be fully green. Yes! All right, so that's finally fixed. By the way, guys, I've spent over an hour trying to figure this out. So this video is probably going to be late today. Anyway, so we've got the player one is in range thing working, right? So let's get back to our script. Player one is in range. Okay, that's fine. But we're going to make a function now. Function find nearest torso. End. And we're actually going to take this whole players thing and cut it. Then we're going to go up here and we're going to make another new variable called target. And it target's going to be equal to nil at first. Okay? So if in here, if the player is in range. Okay, and actually. Hmm. Here's what we're going to do differently. So if target does not equal nil. And we're actually going to take this now is less than, okay, so what we're doing is if the target does not equal nil, meaning there is a target, okay, if the target is actually existent, what we're doing today is we're going to make it to where the zombie can switch targets, okay, switch targets. And when you, a zombie switches targets, it should just be the next closest person. So if the target does not equal nil, that and the torso.position minus tor.position.magnitude is less than, and we're going to basically copy and paste that again, but instead of tor, which I believe, yeah, tor, okay, instead of tor, we're going to do target.torso.position. Okay, that magnitude. So what this is doing is it's checking the new possible target versus the current target to see who's closer. Then, okay. And down here we're going to change it to else there. Here we I don't like doing this. I really don't. Uh, this whole nesting ifs thing but it's what we're gonna do we're gonna put if and we're just gonna paste that back and then another then and that just I don't like doing that because ifs being nested like that isn't always the best practice but right now it simplifies things so down here we're gonna put else if meaning if the target is null then check this okay and after both of these we are going to break the loop. Breaking the loop means get out of the loop. Stop looping. If we've already found a new target, stop looping. We're good. Okay. Break here as well. And we'll actually do the exact same thing here. We're not going to try killing the player yet. Uh, or chasing the player yet. That will be tomorrow along with killing the player. Today I've spent enough time just fixing the model. So there you go. If the torso's position, if the target does not equal null, meaning there is a target already, then the tor. Oh, and one more thing we should do in both of these is target equals uh, player dot character. Okay, and we'll paste that down here as well. All right. So if 
the new possible target is closer than the current target, then change the target and print their name right now. Else, if there is no target yet, look and see if this person is in range. If this person is in range, print their name, they're the new target, and break the loop. Okay? So the best way to test this is to press F7. By the way, great job, Sporeman15. Uh, yes, I'll allow it. Okay. So, there we go. It's working. Okay. Now let's go in here and make two new players. Okay, so I think it's Alt F7, right? I haven't done it in a while. Hold on. Yeah, it's Alt F7, so I'm going to press Alt F7 twice. Oh, shoot. Wrong place. All right. Alt F7 again. All right. So I'm going to make this. Whoa. Okay. So I'm going to move this guy to where he's finally in range. All right. There you go. He's in range. Now let's move this guy to be even closer. But not yet. Hold on. I just want to prove to you guys. Hmm. Why isn't this printing? Oh. In this while true do loop, we need to do find nearest torso. We need to actually call our function. Okay, so let's do that and then disable, re enable the script. There we go. Same player one is in range. It's only going to say that once now because. It's only doing that if there's no target, okay? Or, yeah, basically. Anyway, so we're going to go to our second player now and move him even closer. And we're going to see. Boom. Now it's going to say player two is in range. Right there. So, that is working perfectly even if we move this guy to where he's closer to player one player two player one player two player one player two player one player two it keeps alternating as it should so we're good to go there all right thank you guys for watching don't forget to hit the subscribe button please hit the like or the dislike button corresponding to how you felt about this video and i will catch you guys later